Hey everyone, my name is Dylan, I also go by Malthus, and today I want to talk about something that I love a lot, and that's modding video games. So, a lot of people like to mod games. A lot of people do it. A lot of people use the Steam Workshop to do that. Now, Steam Workshop's awesome, right? The main problem with it is, it doesn't organize, and it only allows you to have a certain number of mods at a time before things get kind of out of whack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a program that I personally use to play something called Living Skyrim, which is my current game that I'm streaming. And uh, it has 1,361 mods, and uh, it works pretty good. Like, I think it's crashed maybe seven or eight times in the 41 episodes that I've streamed. So uh, it's a pretty th easy thing. What you're going to want to do first, though, before you install anything... Uh, is you're going to want to uh, get your Skyrim or Fallout 4 or any of those, and you're going to want to uninstall it, reinstall it with a fresh install, boot it once, but don't actually start a game, and then close it down. What that's going to do, it's going to reset your uh, files for that game, and it's going to get everything set up and in like the default position. So Then we're going to go to Wabajack. Now, if you're familiar with the uh, Elder Scrolls, Wabajack is the staff that Sheogorath uses. That's what it's named after. It's basically just, we do crazy shit. So you're going to go to wabajack.org. It is fairly, you know, it's, it's safe from everything I've read. Haven't had any issues. I've been using it for over a year. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to download it. And you're going to put it on whatever your fastest drive is. So for me, I have a solid state one terabyte. That's my C. I put it in there. Okay. I download everything else to my four terabyte D drive, which is a, a mechanical hard drive. So you're going to download and then you're going to launch it. It looks like this. It's kind of terrifying. Don't worry about it. Uh, you're going to avoid these two buttons for right now. You're not experienced enough, uh, experienced enough to use them. This is for if you want to, ins like if you download onto a, external hard drive and then give it to another computer you'd be able to install it from that drive or if you want to curate your own mod list you can but those are advanced features we're not going to cover those today what we want to do is we want to go to browse, uh, browse mod list and it's going to bring up uh, so I was looking up Morrowind because I'd like to play modded Morrowind after I finish modded Skyrim so all I did was search for M-O-R-R M-O-R-R and it brings up a bunch of mod packs, okay? Some games have more than others. So if we do Skyrim, it brings up, as you can see from the bar over here, there's a bunch. Um, and there's lots of different kinds. So if you've watched uh, Spiffing Brit, he's currently playing a survival-based one. That's one of these mod packs from what I believe. Uh, I'm playing Living Skyrim, which is more like an RPG overhaul. And it's pretty dang fun, okay? And there's going to be lots of different ones in here. You can just kind of go through, read the descriptions. They've all got, like, different uh, descriptive tags on them. Um, if you don't have a very strong computer, but you still want to try this, go for the lightweight ones, okay? That means that they are under a certain threshold, and they're made to run better on worse computers, okay? But as you can see, you can just, so this is the Living Skyrim, that's the one I use. And what it does when you hover over it is it shows you the size of the files. So for this one, uh, you're going to have to have like 350 gigs of extra space. So it takes up a lot of room. My total Skyrim file, like with the mods included, is about 450 gigs. Um, and it takes up a lot of room, but I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. There are tons of mod packs for games like Skyrim and Fallout 4. Um, there are less for others, and this has a very active community. So the cool thing is, like, if you have an issue, you're going to be able to find a answer. So we'll go back up to Living Skyrim. We'll use that as the example because that's the one I'm most familiar with, right? You click on it. You can click on the little website button, and it brings up the mod list. They have like a wiki style format for everything, and it's a pretty good little format. Load this back up. 
Let's go to this one. This is the audit report. This is the archive for all the changes and all the different mods, okay? And if you click the little download button, Okay, once you click on it, it might take it a second. Mine was a little glitched up because I have it already. Um, and so it wanted to like update it. But what I wanted was to show you guys how to do this installation. So what you're going to need to do first is we're going to need to go to Nexus. If you aren't familiar, Nexus is like the main place to get mods um, aside from Steam Workshop. So you're probably familiar with this. They have a free version that's slow or you can only do mod one mod at a time, and they have a paid version that is 599 euros, so it's a little bit less than 599, I believe, uh, US, and uh, that covers a whole month. So like, let's say you want to enjoy Skyrim, right? What you can do is you pay the 599 for one month, you download the mod pack, and you immediately cancel your subscription. It costs you 599, but it lets you download all the mods automatically without having to go through and click each one. Now, there are mod packs that are only like 200 mods. That wouldn't be as bad. But you're going to want to, if you're going to want to try one of these big mod packs, I highly recommend try the premium for one month. It's worth it. You're, get, you're basically getting a full game, like a brand new game or more. Like I've been playing Living Skyrim for, I'd say, 100 hours or so, and it's just great. Like... Every time I play it, there's new stuff. So, as you can, as you can see, they've got lots of games on here. And Wabajack doesn't have mod packs for everything. It has mod packs for a lot of stuff. Especially anything touched by Bethesda. Because those are why... Man, there's so many ads. There's so, uh, those things are all, like, highly moddable. So what you're going to want to do is you log in here and you connect your account here. And you are going to go to mod list installation location. You're going to go in here. You're going to pick your uh, your drive. And you're going to do living Skyrim. Where you at? There it is. You're going to do downloads. Select folder. Oh, I did that wrong. Sorry. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to go create a new folder on whatever the largest drive you have is. doesn't have to be the fastest, just the largest. You're going to create a file. So for me, I called it Living Skyrim. Boom. You're also going to create a file inside that file called Downloads. Okay. We want both of these to be empty. Then all you're going to do is you're going to make sure that this is the one you want. So for me, it's Living Skyrim right here. And you are going to do click on the uh, the ellipses, go over to your hard drive, and you're going to go over to your new folder you just made. You hit select, it brings it up here, and then you also do the same thing for your downloads folder. Once you do that, this little thing will say download. For me, it doesn't work because I already have full, uh, files in those folders, so I can't re-download. But uh, you'll be able to do that, and then this is exactly how you have to do it for it to work. If you have issues, there are, uh, like, there's a README, highly suggest that. There's a website, highly suggest looking at that. Discord. You're going to want to look at the, the README and the website anyway to get kind of like a feel of what the flavor is like for the mod because you're going to be spending a lot of time with it. And uh, so like, let's do website. This is all the mod packs that this, these people work on and what they're working on now. So you can uh, go over all their website. They'll have frequently asked questions you can go over and um, support them if you can, because these people do amazing work and it's incredibly time consuming to make a mod list like this, and especially to keep it up. So like these people have... Living Skyrim, which is amazing. They have the Morrowind mod, which is good. Path of the Dovahkiin, I tried to play it. It's it's too action-y based for me. I like the more RPG style. Um, but they have lots of shit. Lots of shit. They have a Silent Hill version of Skyrim. Um, 
So once you download everything, what you're going to want to do is instead of loading, instead of playing your game through Steam, you're going to go into your your Living Skyrim or whatever fly, uh, whatever mod pack you choose, and you're going to go into the main file. You're going to go all the way down to Mod Organizer. Almost all of them use this. It's a uh, application that is necessary to organize this many mods. So I already have it open, but just showing you. You just click on it. It's a little application. Brings up something like this. This is going to have every mod that's installed. And as you can see, there's a lot. So if you technically didn't want to use something, like you didn't want there to be narrative loot, you could turn it off. If you didn't want like a particular quest line to show up or side character, like I'm playing uh, in the game I'm playing, there's a side character named Recorder. She is a uh, Deadpool-esque kind of character where she talks to the player and some people fucking hate her. So you could go in here and turn her off. And uh, what you want to do is have this done before you start the game. Because whenever you make a character with a mod pack like this, and then you go in and start changing stuff, it's going to have unintended consequences. And I don't want you to have like a corrupted save file. So once you pick your mod set, leave it. Okay, just leave it alone unless you know exactly what you're doing. Um, so as you can see, I have 1,301 active mods. Um, and all you'll have to do once you get everything set up here, you just kind of cursor over it. I would not update. I would not refresh. I would not do anything on here once you get it working one time. Okay, I'm very superstitious about that. I don't update my stuff, my Skyrim on, on Steam. I don't update my mods once I get them downloaded unless I have some sort of game-breaking crash that I know there's a fix for. All you have to do once you do that is you hit run, and it will start Skyrim up for you and load it up and play it. And then you'll be paragliding and fighting Molag Ball as a dragon and playing in a Silent Hill-esque fantasy world. So, I hope you try this. It is worth the $5.99 to do a Nexus Premium account. You know, and um, like I said, if you have like Fallout 4, Skyrim, Morrowind, during that month, you could download mod packs for all of them. You know, especially if, you, if you're if you like me, I have one fast drive and then two big but slow drives. So I just load the huge files onto that. And um, I've noticed personally that if you have your Wabajack and your game on your fast drive and then all of the mod files on the slow drive... It's pretty good. Like the game, run, the game runs just fine, uh, but it's kind of slow. So if you can, like, I'm, I'm honestly thinking about getting a one terabyte flat, uh, SSD just so that I can mod or have all of my game files and everything on a solid state drive in one spot, dedicated because that's just how I stream. I mean, it would be nice if I didn't have nearly as much loading time and everything, but for like just a guy who's going to sit down and drink a beer while you play some Skyrim, you can have it on a regular hard drive. It's going to be way cheaper. Just go buy a four terabyte one or a two terabyte one. And, um, you know, it's still a, a big file, but it's well worth it. Also, before you start downloading for the first time, please do it at night before you go to bed. It takes hours and it locks your computer up because it's downloading and installing at the same time and um it'll have like trackers up here you just let it go okay you can tell it how much uh like bandwidth you want it to use and everything i just let leave that alone you know um whoa shit so this is also where you you can also use vector plexus I, i've just never used it but you, I use uh, Nexus Mods, and it's just a little plug-in that you log into, okay? Um, aside from that, like, it's it's a good experience if... Man, I will say the one thing is it opens up a lot of windows. Um, if everything goes well, when you come back to your computer after, you know, you wake up the next day or you get back from work, that's also a good one to do. Um, this little box down here will be green if it worked. 
And if it did, if it's green, you're good. If it's red, uh, you're going to want to open up the, uh, it's going to create a file, a readme file that has what is erroring on you. And sometimes when you have giant mod lists, um, one thing that you can, uh, that'll, you'll kind of run into is you'll have like one mod or something that's not working right. And it's because it can't auto download. So what you would do is, or what I had to do is, um, there were like four mods that would not auto install. So I took the readme and I put that on my second monitor, or you can write it down if you, if you only have one monitor. And, uh, I went to Nexus and downloaded those manually, or you can use like GitHub or something like that if you have to, but all you have to do is place those in the file and it'll work just fine. Or if it's something you're not really caring about, like I think, I think it was like hair mods or clothing mods or something like that, that I don't really use. Uh, I could have just ignored it and just gone over. Now, if um, everything worked and it just isn't working right, what you can do is you can click this override, uh, override installation. Only do that if you have to, because what it's going to do is it's basically going to just re-download everything and install it again. And that takes another four or five hours. Plus, it puts strain on your hard drives by deleting all that shit off there, too. So don't do it if you don't have to but it's an option. Um, yeah, a couple of other things I've run into. Um, it can take a long time and some of the mods are huge. So like I'm currently doing one, uh, that's like the, uh, vigilance of Stendar. And just that mod is like 15 gigs. Nexus is great, but it was not really built for that size of a mod. It's really built for things that are like, you know, half a gig, one gig, you know, stuff like that. And so it gets caught up sometimes. All you have to do is just restart the download. Um, and don't do override, just do this one and it'll check for any that are missing. So, um, if you have any questions or comments or want to know how something specifically works, leave me a comment. Um, I, I love this thing. I'd love for more people to know how to use it. Um, I did do uh, a, f a Fallout 4 playthrough with several hundred mods. It also worked well, so there's that. And you can get a lot of enjoyment out of a game you've already spent a lot of time in. Uh, it basically just breathes new life into it, makes it a whole new game. So Now, after this, I'm going to be starting a series, basically going through Living Skyrim and showing all the cool stuff you have. My first video is going to be talking about the, the, the Vigilance of Stendar quest line because it's amazing. Like, it has every horror trope you can think of. You're fighting Daedra, you're fighting vampires, um, you're fighting Moleg Ball, you know, because he's the person that the Vigilance of Stendar fight the most. And it, they do a really good job. There's like a Silent Hill section. There's like everything. So I'm really excited to talk about that. I downloaded... Um, a bunch of my streams that I'm going to pull video from. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but if there's anything you want me to do, like I could do a video on the paragliding. Uh, I'm basically just going to make all this and make like a mod playlist. And so if there's any, if you're like looking through here and you're like, well, what is that? I can look at it for you. Just hit me up in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. I use um, Dylan DeWar Boss. So D-Y-L-A in... DA war boss. That's my personal Twitter. Uh, or we have BSD four, the number four Etsy. And that's my, uh, business account for the story run burning steel designs. Uh, we sell Warhammer parody stuff. So if you have any questions, hit me up. I am available and I would love to help. So I hope you guys have a good day and a great week.